Okay, in the last class, uh, we have discussed about the interfacing of uh, a simple LED light emitting diode 28086 and then a simple uh, switch. Okay. So, I have given the example of an input device such as switch and output device LED. Today, we will discuss about uh, how to interface keyboard which is one of the major input block for any microcomputer. Okay. How to I mean uh, interface a keyboard to the 8086 interfacing of hexadecimal keyboard i am discussing hexadecimal keyboard as the hexadecimal keyboard implies 16 keys will be there so, we have different types of the keys, normally we will use the mechanical switches, push button type of thing. Okay. So, here we have to connect uh, the 16 uh, keys in 4 rows and 4 columns. So, we have to use 4 rows and 4 columns. So, these are 4 rows and we have 4 columns. These 4 columns will be connected to power supply of plus 5 volts. Then the switches will be arranged here at the cross sections. This is one switch. If you press this uh, push button, the switch will be closed. So, you know, zero switch, one, two, three, we have four. 6 and 7 4 5 6 7 8 9 A because hexadecimal 10 will be A B this will be C D E F This has to be connected to the ports of 8255. Okay. So, I am taking 8255 here. This is 8255. This will be connected to 8086 this side. I am not showing these connections which we have already discussed in the earlier classes. So, to one of the ports of this, we have to connect through diodes. This you have to connect to one port. This port has to be programmed as output port. So, you can use any port, say port A. 
then another port you have to use for inputting this we have to use 8 pins of this one so this 4 again we have to take the status of this one also we are going to take here as 4 inputs we have 4 rows and 4 columns the entire information will be taken into this port this can be any port I will uh, take this as port B this is PB0 PB1 so on up to PB7 this is PB7 this is PB0 PB1 and so on this I will take as PA0 PA1 PA2 and PA3 So, how to program this port A as output port and port B as input port. Let us take both in mode 0, this also in mode 0. So, let us take the address of this one as which you have derived in the last class as this is FCH, FCH is the port of address of this one. FDH is port B address, FF is the control word register. Port C is FEH which, which we are not using here. Okay. So this also has to be connected to this common. Then what will be this uh, control word to program this port A as output port in mode 0 and port B as input port in mode 0, what will be the control word? So, we have 8 bit status of the control word for I O R mode selection, the first bit is 1, then this last one is port C lower, so which we are not using, I am just taking as output port this is port B, port B how to use as input port, so this should be 1 and this is mode selection for port B, I want to operate in mode 0, this is port C upper, so I am not using, I am taking as output port, this is port A, we have to program as output port, so 0, these two bits are mode selection of port A, so I am operating in mode 0, so both are zeros. So, what is the hexadecimal equivalent of this one, 8, 2, 82 H. So, you have to take first 82H into control word register. Okay. Now, here the basic process to interface a hexadecimal keyboard to the microprocessor and then we have to read the corresponding hexadecimal value into say some AL register. If I want to press 0, I am taking this such that AL will be having key value. Okay. So, if I press 0, 0, 0 has to be taken here. If I press 1, 0, 1, if I press A, 0, A, if I press B, 0, B and so on. So, whatever the key that we are going to press that hexadecimal value, so I want to take into accumulator ALA. So, here we have some hardware as well as I have to write the program also. Okay. So, before going for this uh, program, this is the basic steps in interfacing a keyboard to the 8086 is we have three steps, one is called, first we have to detect the key, then second one is debounce the key, third one is decode the key. So, 
So, I will explain these operations with the help of flow chart, then I will convert the flow chart into assembly language program. Okay. So, the basic uh, process for detecting the key will be you output a 0 on any of these ports. Okay. If I output a 0 here, let us first assume that if all the keys are open, no key is pressed. Okay. So, what will be the value here? Because this 5 volts is there. So, this 5 volts through this resistor, resistor will be normally 10 kilo ohms. Through this resistor, 10 kilo ohm. This will be connected here. So, here you will get 1, 1, 1, 1. Whenever you have 1, 1, 1, 1 here means 1, 1, 1, 1 here. Whenever you have 1, 1, 1, 1 here, means no key is pressed. Because these are directly connected. Okay. Here there is no connection here at the insert set. Let us assume that here there are no connections. Connections will be represented by a thick dot. Here there is no thick dot, so there is no connection at these junctions. Okay. So, if no key is pressed, these 4 bits will be 1111 because these 5 volts through after some drop across this uh, resistor, that same 5 volts a value will come set this I mean uh, columns thereby you will get 1111 here. Okay. If any key is pressed, what happens? If any key is pressed, suppose let us assume that key C is pressed. So, what happens? This P A naught value will be connected here. If P A naught is 0, so this is 0 volts, this is 5 volts, so this is 0 volts, this is 5 volts. So, because of this short circuit, this becomes 0 volts and a 0 will be appeared here. Okay. If all are 1s means no key is pressed. If any one column is having 0, means there is a 1 key pressed in that particular column. So, suppose if I get 0 here, the key pressed can be either 0 or 4 or 8 or C. The key pressed will be either of these 4. If I get 0 here, the key pressed can be either 1, 5, 9 or D. So, like that. So, a 0 on any column represent, there is a key pressed in the along that particular column. Okay. So, with this basics, I will go to the flow chart and then program. So, the flow chart will be for this. As I have told, there are three steps. First one is detect flow chart. First step is detect, then debounce, then decode. So, in order to detect, the first thing is we will start, this is start of the flow chart. Normally, we will start with this start. Okay. Output 0 on all the rows. So, in the previous slide, so first I am going to send 0 on all the rows. So, these diodes will be I mean uh, short circuited because of this 0, this cathode is connected to 0, anode is connected to some positive voltage. Okay. So, these resistors are so selected that if I send 0 here, so this voltage is greater than cutting voltage of this diode, thereby this diodes will be short circuited. So, before going to um, uh, press any of this key, so what you have to do is, first you have to check that all the keys has been released. Okay. So, after all the keys has been released, then only you have to press the key. Otherwise, you will get a problem of two key lockout. There is one problem with uh, switches is called two key lockout. If 
is whenever a particular key is struck already. If I press the second key, then two keys will be pressed simultaneously. That particular problem is called two key lockout. To avoid this, first I will ensure that no key is pressed, all the keys are in release position. If I ensure that, then we are going to press the key. Okay. So, to check that, so what we are going to do is we are sending first zeros on this and we will check this uh, status at the columns. Okay. So, if no key is pressed, what will be the column status? If I send 0, if no key is pressed, here you should get all ones, means no key is pressed. Okay. So, that is the first step. Output 0 on all rows. Now, to check whether all the keys has been released or not. All the keys released or not. If no, until the key is released, we cannot press the another key. So, it will go here. If it is yes, then I will check for a key that is to be pressed. Okay. Then I will read columns. And read columns also you can write here. Read columns. Key is pressed. Is key is pressed. If yes, we have to go for debouncing. This is for this entire thing is for the first operation which is detect. If yes, it will go for debounce the second operation. Okay. If no, it will wait until the key is pressed. Fine. Then debounce, what is meant by debouncing? So, this is one of the important phenomena in keyboards. Keyboards normally will be having nature of bouncing. Okay. So, normally because what happens is if we have this push button type of push button type of the switch, we have two positions and if I press here. So, before making the final connection, it will vibrate because of this mechanical movements of the switches, inertia and all. Due to inertia, the key vibrates before before reaching the steady state. This phenomena is called debouncing of the key. That is, if I make from low to high, this is low to high transition. So, instead of going into high, so what happens is it will come, it will vibrates. After some time, it will settle at high. This is logic 0, logic 1. This is due to bouncing. The reason for bouncing is as I have told inertia, because, uh, because of the inertia and keys there will be debouncing. So, that is why even if a key is pressed, so I have to wait for some time until it settles down. This debouncing time you have to set. So, after this also key is pressed means it is original key, otherwise this may be due to noise also. Okay. So, to avoid this noise effect, so I have to wait for some time that will be normally 10 milliseconds. So, for that I have to read columns again.
you obtain a delay of set a delay of 10 milliseconds still key is pressed you have to check still key is pressed if no this will be due to noise if still key is pressed this is original key ok if no because of the noise so you have to go to this if s yes, then you have to go for decoding i will continue this here to connect the big flow charts so we can use some letter this is ending of this part so this second operation d bounce is over and the third operation is decode ok so i am starting here again with a so this is a this is a means this is linking between these two this is the notation of the flow charts ok so a then again what i will do is i will read the columns before that to decode the column output 0 on 1 row okay what i will do is i will output 0 on 1 row suppose if i output a 0 on this row and if i check 0 on this row if i check these columns four columns if I get 0 here, what does it mean? So, in the first row and first column, 0, if remaining 3 are 1s, so key C is pressed. Okay. So, if I get uh, 1 here, this 3 0 0 0, then key D is pressed. Is it clear? So, you send a 0 on any particular row. We check all the columns. At any column, if I get 0, means in that column, on that row the intersection is the whatever the key is uh, present in the intersection that key has been pressed ok this is the logic to decode the keys then read the columns is key is found If no, we will go for outputting the row on another row. Initially, we will keep this 0 on or the first row, then second row, third row, fourth row. We will check for all the rows. If S, yes, then we have to read the key value. then stop this is the flow chart to interface a hexadecimal keyboard to the 8086 microprocessor now if i know this flow chart i can map this flow chart onto the assembly language program okay so here i'll write uh, main program as well as subroutine okay so for that the program will be Initially, the setting is because we are going to use the subroutine, we have to mean uh, initialize stack segment, data segment is anyhow necessary. So, we take some contents into AX, five thousand move DS comma AX, we are setting data segment register to. 5000 means the starting of the data segment will be 50000 H. 
and move ax comma some 6000 move ax contents onto stack segment means the starting address of the stack segment is 60000 h and whenever stack segment is used stack pointer has to be initiated the stack pointer I am initiating with say some FFFFH so that the stack top will be 6 FFFFH 60,000 plus FFFH okay. Then the first step is so these are this I mean uh, in the main program that I will just call the subroutine call key. So, at key subroutine, I will write a part of this program here because I have to explain this flow chart. So, the key subroutine. So, in this, the first instructions will be you have to push flag register. Whenever you want to use the subroutine, it is always good practice to push all the registers and pop all the registers at the end. Push AX. These are four instructions I am writing in a single instruction bx, cx, dx. Okay. This is the order while popping you have to take in the reverse order. Okay. Now, what is the first step? You have to output 0 on all the rows and you have to check whether all the keys has been released or not. This is to avoid two key lockout problem. Okay. So, initially before going to I mean uh, press a any key, you have to make sure that all the keys has been released previously. So, that no two key lockout problem will occur. Okay. So, how to output 0 on rows? Rows are connected to this rows are connected to port A whose address is FCH. Okay. I have to send 0 0 0 0. So, I will take move move L comma 0 0 H out rows are connected to port A. So, port A address is FCH, FCH comma AL. So, with this instruction what happens? All the port A pins will be having 0 output. Okay. So, in that 4 pins we have connected to the rows, 4 rows. So, 0 will be outputted on 4 rows. Then what is the next step? We have to check any keys released or not. So, if all the keys are released, what does it mean as I have told? So, all the 4 bits should be 1111. So, where we have connected these 4 bits? These 4 columns you have connected to PB4, PB5, PB6 and PB7. Okay? So, you have to check this PB4, PB5, PB6, PB7. If all the 4 these bits are 1s means no key is pressed all the keys are released. Okay? So, how to check this last uh, 4 bits of port B? How to check? How to check the 4 bits of uh, port B? For that you have to write in. I have to take that data into AL. In AL comma the port B data whose address is F D H. So, the very first uh, instruction in this program is I have forgotten. So, you have to initialize the ports. As I have computed this, uh, this controller register I have obtained as 82 H. This you have to take into controller register. So, we can take here anywhere, you can write here also. So, the first two instructions are move al comma 82h out ff comma al. So, this will program port a as output port and port b as input port in mode 0. Okay? Because this is just only initialization only. Now, in al comma fdh, okay, 
in AL FD comma H, AL will comes the data of all the columns, four columns. Okay. What I am doing now is I am ending that AL with FFH, ending AL with FFH. Anyhow, the first row, four rows will be 0, 0, 0, 0 because you have inputted 0, 0, this will be 0. If any one of this particular four column status is 1, ending operation will result non zero value. Okay? So, that is why I am comparing with compare AL comma 0 FH. this can be either FF or 0 F is up to you because the remaining 4 bits you are not using. Okay? Compare AL with 0 FH. So, after this what happens in AL the 4 bits the remaining 4 bits I am not caring if the last 4 bits of this 4 columns if any one of this column is 0. So, for example, 1110. One, one, so, this is E 0 E first will be 8 bits will be 0 E. So, it is not 0 jump on not equal. So, when this jump on not equal is true what does it mean jump on not equal if these two are not equal what does it mean. So, in the four columns we do not have all the ones. Okay? One of this column is 0. If all the four columns are 1, so the last four bits will be 1 1 1 1. So, 0 f AL also will be having 0 f and we are comparing with 0 f itself. So, result should be equal jump not key not equal has to be true. So, because if it is not true go to up 1. So, you have to again input this data and you have to check. So, whenever this is in loop means all the keys has not been released. So, you have to wait until all the keys has been released. So, whenever this program come out of this loop means all the keys has been released. If all the keys has released four column bits will be 1111 we are comparing with 1111 only. So, if they are equal this jump not equal will be true. So, it will come out of the loop. Then after that so, this first part is over these two parts are over. Now, again we have to read the columns. So, for that again in in AL comma where you have to read the columns, columns are connected to port B. Okay? In that port B also the last 4 bits that is PB4, PB5, PB6, PB7, MSB. So, in port B whose address is F DH. So, we are reading columns then you have to check if any key is pressed. If any key is pressed we have sent the zeros on the rows if any key is pressed that particular column should be 0. Okay? If all the column bits are 1 1 1 1 no key is pressed. Okay? Do the same thing MSBF. So, I am going to I mean end with this AL contents in that MSB bits LSB bits you have sent the 0 0 0 0 MSBs if all are ones means this represent no key press if any one of this bit is 0 means there is one key pressed till any one of this bit is 0 we have to wait in a loop ok and AL comma FFH. So, if the result is compare AL comma FFH. Here this ending this becomes 0, so F0H, F0H. 
So, this is anyhow 0. If these 4 bits are 1s, then this will be f0. If these two are same, means no key is pressed. So, jump on equal, jump on equal up to. If this is true, if these two are equal, means no key is pressed. So, I have to wait until the key is pressed. Okay? For that, I have to wait here in the in loop up to. So, if it is false, jump equal is false means in this one of the bit will be 0. Then only this jump equal is false. It will come out of this jump equal means one key is pressed. So, it will come out of this one. So, this will be this point. Okay. Then we have to provide a delay. After the delay, we have to again check the read columns. Okay. So, for delay move C x comma 1 6 E a. In the last class, we have discussed about how to compute the delays. So, with this count value, if I loop here itself, loop here itself, loop is here itself. Then this program will generate a delay of 10 milliseconds. Okay. This program is basically these two instructions are basically to uh, provide a delay of 10 milliseconds. Now, after this again, I will check still the key is pressed. If still key is pressed means that is the original key. Otherwise, it is uh, due to noise or debouncing of the key. Okay. Again, I have to read the columns. So, for that in AL comma port B address is FDH and FFH AL comma FFH compare AL comma F0H jump on equal again the same logic. So, equal means if AL is having the upper uh, 4 bits of AL is having 1111 means no key is pressed means that previous key pressure that we found before the delay was due to noise. So, I have to wait until a valid key is pressed. Okay. So, I have to jump to again the starting of up 1, this up 1 because we found that the key pressed was due to noise or debouncing effect. Okay. If this is I mean uh, false means one of this bit is 0 that means a valid key is pressed. So, I will come out of the loop, then I have to decode that particular key. The third operation is we have to decode the key. So, this is coming out of the loop. So, this again to decode the key, these are the steps. These are the steps we have to decode to find the correct key. Okay. So, what is that next, next operation? We have to output 0 on 1 row then you read the columns, if key is not found, then you send a 0 on the second row, third row, fourth row like that, you have to check for all the four rows. So, you have to output here, now you have to output 0 on one row. Say I am going to output 0 on the first row, which is connected to PA0. The first row, we have four rows. This is connected to PA0, of course, the diodes are there here. This is connected to port 1, PA0, this is connected to PA0. PA0, PA1, PA2, PA3. First, I am sending 0 on the first PA0. So, what is the instruction to uh, send the 0 on PA0? What are the instructions required? In AL comma FEH. Okay. So, FEH means 1111 1110. So, only this least significant bit is 0, remaining all bits are 1s. This I am going to output onto port A. Port A address is FCH, 
A L. So, with these two instructions A 0 will be sent on P A 0. Okay. Then I have to check any column is pressed. Okay. If not, I have to go for the next key to be pressed. Okay. So, here this F E, I have to use 0 here now. I have sent 0 here, next I have to send 0 here, next I have to send 0 here, next I have to send 0 here. But this AL I am using for some other purposes. So, I am keeping this value of AL in CL also. So, that even if I use this AL for some other purpose, the original contents of FE will be present in CL. Okay. So, after sending a 0 on one row, what you have to do? You have to read the columns. If key is not found, you have to repeat the same process. Read the columns. What are the instructions to read the columns? Columns are connected to PB4, PB5, PB6, PB7. So, in simply basically to read the columns in AL, port B address is FDH. Okay. Now, now in AL, we will be having port B, in this the last 4 bits will be, this will be 4 columns, this will be 4 columns. This will be of course, 4 rows itself. Okay. So, in the 4 columns, so I will check if any column is receiving a 0, means in that particular column a key is pressed. Okay. So, if any one of these 4 bits is 0, means key is pressed. If all these 4 bits are 1, 1, 1, 1, no key is pressed. Okay. Then and a l comma this is of course, whatever this 0 f h compare a l comma 0 f. Okay. After ending also if I get 0 f, what does it mean? These are 4 bits are once only. So, no key is pressed. So, jump on equal if this is true, what does this mean? So, this is no key is pressed. So, you have to go for the next uh, row, jump on equal, go to next row. If they are not equal, means key is pressed, we have to decode. Okay. So, next row means where should be this next row? Otherwise, I will write jump not equal so that this will be easier. Jump on not equal. So, if this two are not equal means key is already pressed, we have to go for decode. Otherwise, you have to go for next key. So, before going for the next key, what I will do is because I have to send 0 here, this contains Fe was there in CL. So, I will take again that move CL comma rotate, rotate accumulator, P A 0 becomes P A 1 means to the left, rotate left C L comma 0 1. So, that in C L what will be present? This F E 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 0, you are rotating this, this will come here, this will come here, this will come here, okay. like that. So, this will goes to here. Okay, this becomes F 0 0 1 0 becomes E F sorry D F D H. I am taking this into A L again C L unconditional jump to next row. You have this is equal means already key is found, we have to just decode. If not, I have to go for the next key check. So, where should be this next row? Next row will be here. Now, we have sent 
you have to output this value sorry here next row you have to output and you can save that value fd because in the next round I have to shift this fd by one more bit. So, I am saving into cl again and then I am going for the this inning of this uh, columns. So, this process will repeat. So, once this come out of this loop when does this will come out of the loop if any one of the column is found to be 0. Okay. So, then whatever this row that I have sent and the column these two we have to use for encoding or decoding the program. This is I am calling as decode, but the correct word is encode. Okay. So, you have to encode that particular key. So, for that I can use the lookup table. This is something like, so I have 4 rows and 4 columns. Okay. So, along this row we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. Anyhow, this we are reading in port A. In port A, we are taking this as, in port A, we are taking this P A 0, P A 1, P A 2, P A 3 and this you are taking in P B. In addition to this, we are taking this also. Okay. We are taking this also in P B also this we are taking as P B 0, P B 1, P B 2, P B 3, this is P B 4, P B 5, P B 6, P B 7, P B 0, P B 1, P B 2, P B 3, P B 4, P B 5, P B 6, P B 7. Now, this uh, lookup table will be suppose if I send on this port B itself, if I send 0, 1, 1, 1, okay. and if I receive same 0, 1, 1 is available here also 0, 1, 1, 1. If I receive 0, 1, 1, 1 here itself, what does it mean? In 0th row, 0th column key is pressed which is C. Okay. So, like that if I want to press key 0. So, what will be this values of P B 0, P B 1, P B 2, P B 3, P B 4, P B 5, P B 6, P B 7. Okay. So, 0 key pressed means 0 is here. So, be this row should be 0 and this column should be 0. So, what is the corresponding code? This will be 0 0 0 0 because this row is P B 3, P A 3 as well as P B 3 and this row is P B 4. If P B 4 is also 0, 0 1 1 sorry this, this 3 should be 1 1 1. I have to send 0 in any one of the rows. 1 1 1 0. If I send 1 1 1 0 means P B 3 is 0 and P B 4 is also 0 the remaining 3 are 1s. So, this code is corresponding to key that is pressed as 0. Okay. In port B this we are going to take this 8 bit of the data into this port B. In port B if I receive this code as E 7 H in port B, if I have E7H, means a key 0 is pressed, this is correspond to key press 0. Similarly, what about for key 1? Key 1 means 1 is here, so this should be, this 3 should be 1, 1, 0 only, this will be 1, 0, 1, 1. So, what will be this one? This P B 0 to P B 3 remains same because 1 is also in the same row as 0. So, 1 1 1 0 column will be this 0 will be available here 1 0 1 1. So, now what will be the code? 
E E B. This is the code corresponding to one. Okay. Similarly, you can derive for two, three, so on up to F. Then that value I want to take into accumulator. Okay. So this only the thing that is remaining is how to I mean uh, encode how how to read the key value into the AL register. That part we'll discuss in the next class. Thank you.